This is a set of cabinets in the entryway to my house. It has this plain backsplash because the builder wanted a lot of money, like $500 or $750 to, to tile it. So I just took it as a project I would do in the future. And the future is today. Here's the tile I picked, which is this antiqued glass mosaic. To cut it, I had this great idea of leaving it in the packaging on the cardboard wrapped in plastic so that I could just slide it right through the tile saw and get a nice clean cut. None of that happened. As I pushed the tile through, the glass just cracked and made a mess. I'd never worked with glass tile before, but I did buy a brand new diamond blade in the hopes that uh, that would just go through it like butter, which was not the case. So the method I settled on was cutting out individual pieces of these tiles, marking them where they needed to be cut, and then just eyeballing them and sliding them through. I'm wearing gloves not only to protect from cuts from the glass, but so I can put my fingers very close to the diamond blade and keep the glass very well supported as I push it through. This method mostly worked. There were two issues with it. One was keeping the cut on the line because I'm, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not running it against a guide. And the other was when I get to the very end of the cut, sometimes the glass would just snap open. If I was left with a jagged piece of glass, I could just use the side of the diamond blade to file it down, make it smooth. For later cuts, I started pushing the glass through halfway, turning the tile saw off, turning the piece around, and then pushing it through the other way. That way the cuts would meet in the middle and hopefully not snap off the end, but even that wasn't perfect. If somebody has a great way to cut glass tile, I'd love to hear it in the comments. I do have a glass cutter, which I've, I've used on other projects, and I just don't have the hang of it. I can never get that thing to reliably snap along the score line. I got lucky with this wall in a couple of respects. One of them is that this outlet is almost directly in the center of the wall and at the correct height so that I could just pop out a single glass tile and that would suffice to cut around the outlet instead of it bleeding over into adjacent tiles. The second lucky part about this wall is that it turned out to be exactly three sheets of tile wide. It's about four feet wide and each sheet was 16 inches wide. In terms of height, the wall is just about a half inch too high to have a convenient number of full tiles. In this case, given how hard the tile is to cut, instead of making the tile fit the space, I tried to make the space fit the tile. So I cut a thin strip of wood and nailed that up under the cabinet. It's really not visible when you're walking by and it helps space the tile just right. For this top row of tile, I wasn't able to get mortar in all the nooks and crannies, so I did my best getting it across the top, and then I just put mortar on the backs of each individual piece of tile to make up the difference.
So my hair is a little gray, but it's not that gray. What you're seeing there is the splash of the tile saw. It spits water and shards of glass back at you while you're cutting. So important to wear eye protection and a mask and then to take a shower afterwards. For grout, I had this platinum color sitting around from a prior tile project. I posted a video on that already. It's unsanded grout, which was important because I didn't want to be scraping sand across the face of these glass tiles. I didn't want to scratch them. And color-wise, I don't know if I'm super in love with it. Maybe it would have been better to go with something a little darker, like a charcoal or even a black interested to know your comments. It, it wouldn't be hard to change. I could just get a grout pen and, and change the color. Wherever the tile meets a perpendicular wall, I'm just using siliconized grout that matches the unsanded grout. A couple final touch-ups and we're done.